Now let's look into the details of a use case diagram using star UML. And for purposes of this demo, I'll use a list of responses in terms of actors and use case names that I received from a prior batch. So this is the, this is the set of actors that uh, the participants had provided and these are the list of use cases. So uh, let's get into star UML. Let me start a fresh copy so that uh, you can see the steps from the very beginning. As soon as I open star UML, this is what I'll see. I want to go to File, New from Template, and then Rational Approach. Get into the Use Case View folder and double click this Use Case View with this little icon right here. And let me just make this canvas a little bit larger so that as I draw out, I have enough room in there. So as a first step, I'm going to draw the frame. So click on the frame once and then drag the shape that you would like. Choose use case view and then say OK. So this is the system that I'm building. Now, outside of this system boundary, I'm going to have my list of actors and list of use cases. So let's start with a list of actors. So now if I look at the responses sheet, I see the first actor as customer. Fair enough, that's quite straightforward. That's one of the most uh, important actors as we draw out this system. I got that. Okay, so customer, that's quite free, quite straightforward and you probably have that. You could have named it as the passenger. That's absolutely fine uh, as long as you have that customer listed there, you should be good. The next actor that was given to me was the flight manager. These are uh, the roles that have reports in the system. So they would probably be secondary actors. So right from the get go, let me put them on the right side of the system boundary. I uh, selected the use case model by error. So I'll right click, delete from model. I'll go to actor. And since I'm dealing with actors entirely here, let me double click actors so that I have a lock symbol activated so that every time I click in here, I will reveal a new actor. All right, so I have a flight manager and then the flight supervisor. What else do we have? Customer service rep, that's probably right. And they probably have a more active role. They perform the role of a primary actor. So I'll draw them on the left. And we can always readjust and uh, move things around if, uh, if needed. But as I'm drawing them out, I am trying to retain um, the position as the less of the diagram for primary actors and the position as the right of the diagram for secondary actors. Although I'll be using directed associations, it's a good practice to always have primary on the left and secondary on the right. All right, so who, what, what other actors do we have? We also have a bank actor. And this came up as a questionable actor because what do we mean by the bank? Is it an employee? Do we mean the system? Or uh, you know what, what exactly does bank mean? What do they have to do with this system? As we dug into this, Further in the live uh, session, people were indicating that some sort of a bank needs to be involved because we're dealing with payments and such. So I had recommended that we have a more specific uh, name for the bank. What are they doing in terms of this system? They are just processing the payment. So I'll call them payment gateway, which is a standard term for uh, someone or some system that processes your payments. So rather than having it as bank, I'll probably use payment gateway as the actor name rather than using the bank itself. Now we also have someone who needs to schedule um, the flight information and uh, cars and hotels and so on. So the next scheduling stuff definitely makes sense. So we'll go ahead and create a scheduling actor.
what else do we have time and the reason the time is an actor is we have a couple of automated reports so obviously if the reports need to be generated on a daily basis we're not going to expect some actor to go in and then click on a big generate button and have the report generated to them we probably want that to be automated so that every night the report automatically gets emailed to them or it's available once they log in whatever the case may be but the important point is that it's automated the process of generating the reports is automated so if you don't have a time actor definitely include one so that you can show that the reports in the case study are automated next is the flight clock okay this actor was specifically called out in the business case so that definitely makes sense the next answer given out was technical staff now when i question what exactly do you mean by technical staff uh, it was portrayed as whoever takes care of this system providing support uh, and and things like that so keep in mind this is not part of the customer service team but technical support for the system itself now the case specifically did not mention that role and you know while it's arguable that uh, for such a system it might be possible that some of the users have support role who can log in and just look at the data for instance not having the ability to do transactions since it was not mentioned in the business case i did not want to make it more complicated than it was so i had uh, recommended that we do not include the technical staff component of it just to keep the core focus of the business case impact uh, intact so a uh, flight clerk was the next actor defined and then someone also mentioned tna so what do we mean by tna the system itself they wanted to create an actor for because an actor could be a person or an external system however in this case tna itself is the system that you are building this boundary right here represents the tna system so i didn't see the need for a tna actor in fact it wasn't appropriate to draw an actor symbol for the system that you're developing so that probably is not a valid actor so we went ahead and removed the consideration to make tna as an actor and someone else also had uh, proposed car rental agency now car rental agency if you think about it are they logging into our system and managing the rentals or the prices and, and things like that perhaps not that's why you have a scheduling staff who takes care of managing the flight flight reservations car rentals uh, hotels etc so you have someone within the tna organization that takes care of that so we didn't really see the need for the car rental agency to have a login not to say that it's not possible in an entirely different environment but if we go with what stated in the case study there's nothing to indicate that the rental agencies have direct access to the system rather uh, they do their scheduling through the scheduling staff so perhaps this person gathers all the inf all the information they need perhaps by email or some sort of a report and then somehow feeds it into the tna's uh, system so the car rental agency is not having a direct uh, interaction with the system so we chose to remove that consideration as well okay so these are the primary actors that uh, were indicated as well as secondary actors so this sort of completes the list of actors